doing great, man. Just uh, living the dream right now, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, Ohio State in the Final Four. We had you on, I believe, right as the Big Ten tournament was getting underway, and, and you pretty much told us at that time the sky is potentially the limit for this Buckeye basketball team. So looking back on both the Big Ten and the NCAA tournament, it, they pretty much did almost what you expected them to do. They absolutely did. You know, they came up short a little bit, but uh, nothing to hang their heads about. They had a wonderful season, wonderful run at the end. Um, I think they showed. I think they showed everyone that they were capable of doing everything that they set out to do, and um, pretty much did it. And you certainly know, and we talk about this a lot on the program, uh, winning college basketball's title six straight games as the difficulty increases round three. It's really one of the toughest things to do in sports. Absolutely. Um, you know, matchups and, and scouting takes into play, you know, time zones and, you know, all the traveling and just the lack of time for preparation. I mean, you know, you have two days sometimes to prepare for a top 10 team. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing easy. Um, you know, give Coach Miner and his staff, you know, a hell of a round of applause for, you know, everything that they did and, and you know, just the team in general. They did a they did a wonderful job and uh I hope I hope they understand and know that, you know, Buckeye Nation is is very proud of what everything that they did this season. No doubt. Thirty one wins, like you said, came up a little bit short. We were all hoping they'd be in that title game. But how much do you think you know a lot of these guys, you deal with them. How much do you think, you know, dropping to Kansas in the final four, even though it was a great season, motivates these guys in the off season as they get ready for next year? Oh my goodness. Uh tremendously. They're uh they're they're chomping at the bit. I know a couple of guys that were in the gym last night getting ready. So uh you know all the young guys, you know, Thompson, Thomas, um, Hugh Ross, uh, Williams. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, Cybert and, and Weatherspoon. Everybody is, everybody is really, really excited about next season. J.J. Sollinger joins us here on 97 won the fan via the Subway Fresh Day Cotline. Uh, as you mentioned, a lot of guys coming back. You know, not all of them played a ton this year, but but Kraft and Lenzel will be back, and we're not sure about Deshaun yet. They're returning a pretty nice group of players, though. Absolutely, you know they got a uh, they got a good core. Um, I don't really see too much of a drop off, to be totally honest. You know, we're absolutely losing uh, William Buford, and uh, Jared made his decision. You know, and uh, for the most part, you're going you you can't replace those two, but you can reload. Sure. So. Um, I, I like I like I like the thing that we have coming in next year. I really I can't wait. I know you're the same. Can't wait for basketball to start up again. I'm ready to go. Uh, let's talk about Jared for a second. Took a few days, talked it over, made his decision. He's going to the NBA. I think most people are pretty excited for him. What do you think, as the older brother? I'm excited for him. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a tough decision. Um, anytime you have a university such as ours that uh, just looks out for you since for since day one. Um, couldn't ask for a better situation in college, and uh, to walk away from that had to be tough for my brother. But it was, it was his time. Um, you know, a lot of people thought last year was his time, and he nor I nor our family thought that he was ready. Um, but uh, this year he is, and I think um, I'm, I'm just excited for him, man. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see how well he's going to do. I think he's going to be a better pro than he was a college basketball player, and I think that's saying a lot. It is. I mean, you can talk about that a little bit, how tough it is not just to leave Ohio State because he's been, you've been a Buckeye fan, you know, since you could probably remember knowing what the Buckeyes were, but also a coach in Thad Mata. Thad talked yesterday about, you know, he's losing a great player. He's losing a friend, and I know you were still great friends with Coach Mata. That's got to be a little tough, too. I've got to, you know what, I can, I can imagine, you know, the day, the day we, we lost to Georgetown, mm-hmm. I cried, and there were, there were a lot of different reasons why I was crying. I was crying because I was leaving – you know, my teammates, I've been leaving the college experience. But most importantly, you know, Coach Meyer is a friend. You know, he's a mentor, he's a friend, he's a father figure. Um, he, he does a lot more than, you know, he has a lot more to do with than, than just basketball. He's a, you know, he's a friend for life. And, you know, they're going to continue to be friends. But, you know, to not be in front of his face every day has got to be tough. It's tough for me. One of the admirable parts, and you know this, about Jared's game and about his personality is his work ethic, his drive to get better. When he talks to you, when you talk to him, what what aspects do you guys feel like he needs to improve or, or clean up and get better on? You know what? Right now, Jared's, um, you know, his uh, his body. He's got he's got to work on his body. Um, he has a lot more work to do. I think the, um, you know, the the 
injuries, if you want to call them that, you know, the, the nagging injuries, I guess. They weren't really injuries, but the nagging injuries kind of like got him away from, you know, being able to play the way he wanted to play. But um, if he just gets his body intact, his conditioning, his, you know, speed, agility, and all that stuff, I think those are some of the things that he needs to work on. What What's going to be shocking for a lot of people is they're not going to be nece- able to necessarily double-team the way that they were doing this year. I mean, teams just absolutely dared other guys to beat them. And uh, for the most part, we did. But in the NBA and the legal defense and, and the way defense is set up and, you know, the shooters that you have around you, people aren't going to be able to play Jared the way that they played him this year. And I think he's really going to um, – I think he's going to enjoy the space that, he, that he's given, and I think he's going to produce a lot better because of it. J.J. Sollinger here on 97.1 The Fan. I think that's a great point. The last year when there was a real good perimeter threat in, in Diebler and Lighty could knock him down too, and teams couldn't focus all their attention on the interior. You know, Jared was uh, you know first-team All-American even this year when they were double and triple team, and he's still first-team All-American. We really saw when he's able to get one-on-one, he's better than a lot of basketball players out there, and that's probably, look, in the NBA, you know everyone can shoot, so they can't focus as much attention on the big guys. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you can't play Jerry one-on-one. Um, you have to do something. You have to do something. You have to dig down or you have to double team. You have to do something. And, um, you know, teams for the most part knew that this year. And they, they some some teams did better jobs than others in double teaming. But I think with the wide the wider lane in the NBA, I think with the NBA three-second defensive rule, um, along with, you know, having shooters around you, you know, shoot – guys that get paid to shoot it's a lot different than good shooters you know when you have a guy that just sit his job is to sit in the corner and wait for someone to double team so he gets the ball and knock that three down from the corner a lot of guys call it the nine million dollar corner mm-hmm. because of bruce bowen he got a nine million dollar contract just to shoot in the corner that was his only job to shoot the fence um I think, you know, it's going to be, he's going to be a tough matchup. Not to mention the fact Jared can play on the outside. I know he showed glimpses of, he showed little bits and pieces, but um, I was in the gym with him last night, and he pretty much shredded me to pieces on the perimeter. That's all we were working on. And uh, I'm just anxious and I'm looking forward to, you know, him being able to show everyone everything that he can do. And you're, he's, he's a selfless player, and, it wasn't asked of him this year because it wasn't needed. You know, we yeah. had tremendous perimeters on the floor with him, but uh, next year he'll he'll be able to show everything. I was going to say he shredded you, and I bet you can still ball pretty well too. So it's not like he's shooting over me, five five guy with no athleticism. So that's still pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, I was I was a little I was a little taken to see how <laughs> how well he is, how how much he's come along on the perimeter because you know he's going to have to be a face up four in the league and. So that's what we're focusing on right now, and he's, uh, I mean, he's, if you ask me, he's ready. I'm I'm just excited for him. I can tell in your voice. We're thrilled for you guys, too. You played pro hoops for a little bit. You're retired now. Like you said, you're living the dream here in Columbus, very successful businessman. But hey, when looking back, what's the biggest difference you found in, in playing in college and playing in the pros? The attitude. Um, you got to, you, you don't really have someone telling you what to do. You got to be able to do it yourself for for the most part. You know, during the off season, um, preseason, they're a little bit different than college. You know, you have your coaches, you got classes. Um, pros, you know, pros got to be pros, and they gotta they gotta go to work every day, even when no one's watching. I think that's the number one thing. Another thing, it's a business. Um, you know, you play for the glory, you play for, you know the passion and, and the love of the game and um, amateur sports. But that that changes a little bit when, when you become a pro. And uh, you got to be mental tough. you got to be mentally tough. So I think he's ready for it. Um, he's seen it with me. And, um, you know, he's got a lot of friends that's in the business that does it too. So uh, I think he knows what, what, what he's going up against. All right, Deshaun Thomas right now, I guess he's in that uh, phase where he's gathering as much information as possible. Uh, boy, he came on really strong in the month of March. It's going to be interesting to see what, what he decides here in the next few weeks. It's going to be interesting. You know, he has, he has a decision to make. Um, he has to sit down with his family a lot like we did. He has mm-hmm. to sit down with his family and Coach, Coach Mata 
and um, come up with the best decision for him. And, I, you know, the Selinger family wishes him nothing but the best. JJ, I can't tell you how much fun it is talking basketball with you, my friend. I appreciate it. I know you're busy, guys, so I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll be checking in again before the NBA draft. Tell Jared and everyone, we, congratulations. We wish him the best in all the workouts. We'll talk to you guys soon. Sure will. Thanks so much.